Let's all share the good news with the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection Podcast with your host, Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection. My name is Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. And this is Haley. And we are going to open and share the gospel messages with you and your family. And why don't we get started with prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We give you thanksgiving and praise for you are Lord. Lord, we lift our hearts to you in great love, in great adoration of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we place every area of our hearts into yours. We ask, O Lord, to lift us in our hearts and our minds in the sanctifying grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, in your mercy that endures forever that we praise, in your goodness that is everlasting that we rejoice in. We give thanks to you in your hearing, O Hosanna, in the highest. And we lift our hearts to you and ask for your holy presence, Lord, for ourselves, for our family members, for everyone in the world. Please lift us always in your mighty presence. Guide us always in our hearts. Speak to us, O Lord, for your servants are listening. And we ask, O Lord, for your Holy Spirit to speak to every family member and everyone in the world. Strengthen us always in you, O Lord. Breathe on us, O Lord, and pour forth your living water to renew us in our baptism. And we ask for your fire, O Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come and renew the face of the earth, enkindle the fire of our hearts, fill the hearts of the faithful, enkindle our hearts in the fire of your love. Send forth thy Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to shape us, to lift us, to heal us, and ignite our hearts ablaze. Shape our hearts, illuminate the Holy Word, enlighten our minds and hearts, increase our understanding of your gospel messages, increase our understanding of your mighty, holy, living Word that is the highest Word we have, and we rejoice in its hearing O Hosanna in the highest. And we ask for Jesus in our hearts. We ask for the Lord himself in our hearts in a spiritual communion until we can receive him in sacramental communion. We ask for you, O Lord, for your love to pour forth through every cell in our being. For your love, O Lord, to pour through every area of the world. For your merciful gaze for any area of the world, wherever mercy is needed the most, we ask, O Lord, to plunge us into your wounds in every area where there is violence, war, or a state of sin. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to strengthen every area of the world to act on your holy, mighty, living word. We ask this for our own families, for ourselves, and for every nation in the world. We ask in your holy name, O Lord, for your favor, O Lord, in this way, in Jesus' name. And we place Ukraine and Russia into the sacred heart of the Lord. We place United States of America into the sacred heart of the Lord, and every country into the sacred heart of the Lord. We place every mom and every dad, and today we celebrate the most chaste heart of St. Joseph. We celebrate the most chaste heart of St. Joseph on the Wednesday following the solemnity of the most sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. And interestingly enough, the day after the solemnity of the most sacred heart of our Lord, which is celebrated on June 24th, is followed the very following day by the feast day of this Immaculate Heart of Mary. So we just celebrate the Holy Family today, and we celebrate 
our Lord, who we rejoice in our Lord, who came for us all. As Mother Mary said yes to the Lord, as St. Joseph said yes to the Lord, we rejoice in the Lord. Now, today is also the solemnity of St. Peter and St. Paul, the apostles, and we ask for the holy intercession of Mother Mary, St. Joseph, St. Peter, St. Paul, and the apostles, and every saint. We ask for the holy intercession of every holy man and woman, the holy martyrs, and all angels of God, led by St. Michael the Archangel, angels, guardian angels, archangels, pray for us. And we ask for our the holy embrace of the angels and archangels to pray for us all. All, and all of our personal intentions as we place every personal intention into the sacred heart of the Lord. We ask for healing for those closest to us who are asking for healing and for all that have asked us for prayers on their behalf. We pray for them all. We place them all into the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and we thank the Lord in his hearing. And as we place every family member into the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus, we trust in you. We ask for you, O Lord, to guide every heart, to turn to you fully and trust in you. We ask for you, O Lord, to guide us always, lift us always in your mighty Holy Spirit, and shape our hearts, O Lord, as shape our hearts, O Lord, in your mighty, holy, living word. We ask for your beckoning, O Heavenly Father, to beckon all hearts to your Son in the Holy Spirit, to guide every heart, to receive your body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, in the Eucharistic celebration. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to guide every heart, to turn to you faithfully and regularly, to lift every area of the world into your sacred heart. We ask for your holy, mighty spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come and renew the face of the earth. Fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle our hearts in the fire of your love. Send forth thy Holy Spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Lord, we thank you in your hearing and we place every nation into the sacred heart of our Lord today. We place all of Ukraine and Russia. We ask for conversion of Russia. We ask for conversion of every area of the world who persecutes you, O Lord, and place them all into your sacred heart. We ask for your mercy that poured forth for every area of the world. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus is a fount of mercy for us. We trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus is a fount of mercy for us. We trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, we trust in you. We ask, O Lord, for your mercy for every nation. May all glorify your mercy for those who persecute the Lord, for those who may not have an understanding of the Lord, and for those who may not understand how incredible it is to receive your body and blood, O Lord, in the Eucharist. And we ask, O Lord, for your mercy wherever it's needed the most, in our own hearts, in our own families, in any area of the world, in every nation, in your clergy, in your church in our family, in our home, and in the world. We ask for your holy, mighty spirit, Lord. Guide every heart to you, O Lord, in conversion, in metanoia, in turning to you faithfully and daily even, and to glorify your name. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And hallelujah. Jesus is Lord, and may all nations proclaim his name out loud by the power of the Holy Spirit that can only be done in the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus is Lord. Haley, do you have any special intentions that you would like to place in the sacred heart of the Lord? You, me, my mom and my dad, everyone in the world, children, and astronauts, and animals. Hmm, gee, that covers everyone. (laughs) We place everyone in the world into the sacred heart of the Lord. All children. We celebrate dads in the month of June. We place all dads into the sacred heart of the Lord and all moms and every child. We place every family member into the sacred heart of the Lord because all belong to Jesus. And as we all open and share the gospel messages with each other, all can say by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is Lord, for that is who beckons us. That is who calls us. And it is he who chooses us, not we who choose him. Jesus is the one who is going before us, preparing every heart to hear his living word, who prepares our own hearts to hear his living word and helps us all to act on his very living word. This is the Lord who is beckoning to him. He is beckoning to the Father who beckons to the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit, loves us so very much that He comes to us. He knew us before we were ever formed in the womb. He loves us and will never leave us. And we ask for the divine intervention for all families, especially those who have just found out they are with child. May all women say, proclaim out loud in the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to keep my baby. And may they know Jesus is with them. He will never leave them. God will always help them. And God is the one who has ordained every moment for them as family. We ask for your mercy, Lord, in any area of the world where there is an act or support of abortion. We ask for your mercy, Lord, in every area of the world where there has been strife or violence or war or a state of sin. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to penetrate every heart, penetrate every area of the world so that all can proclaim Jesus is Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit and to recognize you just like in the two on the road to Emmaus who exclaimed out loud, my Lord and my God and recognized you in your body and blood, in the breaking of the bread that can be found in the road to Emmaus. Lord, we thank you in the conversion that St. Peter experienced. We thank you in the conversion that St. Paul experienced. We thank you in conversions. And we ask for conversion, O Lord, which is something that Mother Mary prays for the most. Mother Mary prays for conversion the most because this is what makes her heart most sorrowful are those who may not act on the word of the Lord, those who do not trust, do not act, and do not love the Lord, because these are who crucified her son. We ask for your mercy, Lord, in every area of the world. Help all nations say yes to you by the power of the Holy Spirit and your mercy that endures forever. For you lay down your life for everyone, O Lord, and we ask for this through Christ our Lord. Amen and hallelujah. Today's gospel comes to us from the gospel of Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, 
and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Haley, for reading that for us. You're welcome. Okay. So as we turn the word into prayer and praise and thanksgiving, this is what we do in Lexio Divina. We turn the word into prayer and praise and thanksgiving. The Psalms say to enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We give you thanksgiving and praise for you are Lord. Lord, we praise your holy name and we praise your living word. We praise that you are the son of God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Just as St. Peter spoke these words to you, every name has followed in this recognition. We praise you, O Lord, for you are Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit, as was shown to him by our Heavenly Father, who loves us, who sent you, O Lord, to be with us, who guides us all in his mighty Holy Spirit. And as you are one, O Father, O Son, O Holy Spirit, we ask for you now in our hearts. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And Lord, we further ask for the Holy Spirit to ignite our hearts ablaze in your holy fire and help us all increase our understanding of your living word. Guide every word, O Holy Spirit. Guide every conversation and guide us all in glorifying the name of the Lord. Help us to understand how we can serve one another, how we can glorify your name, O Lord, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. So as I ask for the Holy Spirit to guide my words in every word, Jesus is Lord. And this is what is spoken by St. Peter. Now, Jesus, who has brought the disciples to the region of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus is asking his disciples who do people say that I am? And the disciples answer, some say you're St. John the Baptist, others say you're Elijah, and still other Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to the disciples, but who do you say that I am? And this is something that is so very important. Who do we say that Jesus is? For only in the Holy Spirit, only by the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, can we proclaim Jesus is Lord. And that's what is seen here. Saint Peter, who is called Simon Peter, said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus says to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my heavenly Father. God is revealing this is his Son, our Lord, the Christ, and the Messiah. The long-awaited, appointed time of the Lord is right here in this moment. And Jesus, who has called us all to him, just as he called his disciples, has revealed his name. Father in heaven, we ask that you reveal this is truly the Lord to all nations, for all areas of the world, and even in Israel. May all hearts understand Jesus is Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit, by your mercy, Lord. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Blessed are we who proclaim that because flesh and blood has not revealed this to us, but our heavenly Father. And Jesus continues to St. Peter. And so I say to Peter, I say to you, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. The gates of the netherworld... 
The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is where St. Peter is called as first pope of the church. This is the beginning of the Catholic Church. And Jesus is appointing St. Peter as the first pope. And really, it is God who ordained him as such. Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are one, has revealed this is the first pope. For God has called him to reveal to the world this is his witness is in front of the apostles revealing that this is truly the Christ and the Messiah. That's what really we're all called to do is to reveal the son of God, to reveal Christ to the world, to reveal Jesus Christ is Lord. Now it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that all names profess Jesus is Lord. And that can only be done in the Holy Spirit as it is written. And how can we not profess out loud? How can we not proclaim out loud? In the Holy Spirit, Jesus is Lord. You are the Christ. He is the Christ, the Messiah, and the Holy Son of God, Most High. And we praise your name with every name in heaven. Hosanna in the highest. For all names in heaven, praise the name of the Lord in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is also giving the keys to the kingdom of heaven to St. Peter, to Simon Peter. Now, giving the keys to the kingdom of heaven in the Old Testament, as it was spoken by Dr. John Bergsma, the keys to the kingdom was given to the steward of the king. This is the second guy next in line to the king. He is the one who can lock the access to the king. He's the one who can exclude those to the king, and he's also the one who can open the door. Jesus gave the keys to his rock, and he said, So I say to you, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Jesus is giving Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, Solomon's temple, the earthly dwelling, was made on a foundation of bedrock. This is the rock that the the temple was built upon. And the Jews believe that this bedrock was blocking really a shaft that led to the underworld. So Jesus, who is speaking Aramaic, calls him Kephas in the original Aramaic translation, which is Aramaic for rock. Jesus spoke to Kepha, and upon this Kephas, I will build my church. Kepha was turned into Kephas, and that is what we're seeing here in the Gospels. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now here, this is Binding and loosing are two Jewish terms that were used in Jesus's day, according to John Bergsma at the St. Paul Institute. And he says that these terms referred to the authority to interpret God's law in terms of practical daily application. So Jesus is giving the keys of determining God's law of practical daily application to Peter. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And this is given to every successor, every Pope successor as well. Jesus, who gave these keys to the kingdom of heaven to St. Peter, became the first Pope of the Catholic Church. So just as the, just as the earthly temple was built upon the rock, was built upon the bedrock, so also this is a prefiguration for the Catholic Church as St. Peter was made Pope, which the, as it reads in the footnotes of the Bible, as the function of Peter consists in his being witness to Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God, given the authority from the Lord himself, who so loves Peter and the apostles, and all of us in the church, leading Peter and all of us in the new exodus, the through baptism, through the sacraments, through the authority of our Lord given to St. Peter, our first pope. Which is very exciting. 
as the church is really the bride of Christ. Here's the spousal love of the bridegroom giving authority to the bride, to the church, to the first pope. Here is the church being established right here. And St. Paul, as it reads in Second Timothy, which is our second reading for today, I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. I was rescued from the lion's mouth, and the Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. So Paul was poured out like a libation for the Gentiles so that all names can proclaim Jesus is Lord. And he's very bold in his speaking, just like St. Peter. And this is given to them by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we can also ask for the Holy Spirit to help us to boldly declare Jesus is Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit and to proclaim his gospel messages for all that we meet and including our own families. Now, Jesus, who gives us also baptism, he gives us his Holy Spirit. He pours out his Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And even by the power of the Holy Spirit, are we able to say yes to baptism? Are we able to say yes to to the Lord. This is so very important for us all to understand is that God has appointed all of us for to build his kingdom. And we are all called to say yes to the Lord. Are we all popes? Well, not exactly, but we are baptized priest, prophet, and king. Are we all bishops? Maybe not, but we are appointed and even anointed in his Holy Spirit to proclaim his word for uh, for all to hear, to proclaim it loudly and boldly. And this is what the church teaches is that we profess the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord and we do so by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we do so, we share the living word of the Most High. There is nothing higher than the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nothing at all. And his living word stands forever. When we speak his gospel messages out loud, the living word of God goes before us and prepares every heart to hear. It has the intentions of the God, of God the Father who placed his own intentions in his living word and will not come back to him void. We are his disciples. We are his vessels and even his tabernacles as we act on the word of the Lord, as we partake in the body and blood of our Lord. And that is what the Lord has asked us all to do. And this gives us life life in our bodies. As we lift our hearts to the Lord and say yes to the Lord in the sacraments, in his living word, which are given to us in the gospels, we are saying yes to our heavenly calling. We are saying yes to the Lord himself. And it is the Lord who grants us the Holy Spirit, the sanctifying grace for our flesh and grafts us into him, into his mighty Holy Spirit so that we can share an inheritance with him. It is through the laying on of hands. It is through the seal of the Holy Spirit that the promise of God the Father comes down on the apostles. It is confirmation where we receive this sacrament and it is when a bishop anoints us with oil, lays his hand on us so that we can receive the Holy Spirit. And this is the second installment, the strengthening of the Holy Spirit, the seal of the Holy Spirit that is placed upon us by God the Father and can never be taken from us. And in his body and blood that we receive in the Eucharistic celebration, which can only be found 
in the Catholic Church. Why? Because it is through the power of the Holy Spirit and the hands of the ordained priests where transubstantiation occurs. The Holy Spirit comes down upon the gifts on his altar, making the gifts into his body and blood. That is what transubstantiation means. And it is through this transubstantiation that is done by the power of the Holy Spirit that all can receive eternal life in our own bodies. We receive the Lord's body in the holiest matrimony there is available. This is the most intimate way you can receive the Lord is to consume his body. And Jesus who gives us his own body and his own blood to consume gives us his body because of how much he loves us. Not something that we did to incur this incredible, incredible gift of himself. It is God's sacrifice to us, not our sacrifice to him. Jesus came for us all, and he is the bridegroom. We are his bride, and when we partake in his own body, he gives us his body and his blood, and we give him ourselves. This is the two that become one flesh. We become one flesh in the holiest matrimony there is. That is the Eucharistic celebration, and this can only be found in the Catholic Church. And we see the first beginnings of the Catholic Church here in this gospel, in the gospel of Matthew, as St. Peter is given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. St. Peter, the first pope, pray for us. St. Paul, the apostle, pray for us. Saints and angels and holy family. St. Joseph, most chaste heart, pray for us. And may God bless us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. By the way, if you haven't received the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can call your local Catholic church and inquire of the sacramental prep classes that are available in every Catholic parish. Call your local Catholic parish and inquire, sign up, register, make haste to do so. This is truly the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that he gave for us all to be able to consume and this is only available at his altar during the lord's mass daily in fact in every catholic mass so come to mass in the meantime you're welcome if you haven't been a while welcome back if you've never been welcome you are called to receive the body and blood of our lord and if you haven't received the other sacraments as well including baptism reconciliation confirmation you will receive all four sacraments in these classes the sacramental prep classes that are known as rc IA for adults and sacramental prep classes for children. There are classes for everyone. So welcome one, welcome all to the sacraments that the Lord has given for us all in his gospels. And may God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look kindly upon us and grant us all his peace. Lord, grant us all your rest. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And hallelujah. Haley, do you have any Bible verses that you want to share with everyone? My peace be with you. My peace be with you. Very well. Okay. My peace be with you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Jesus wants us to trust in his living word. And we need to ask for the Holy Spirit to be able to understand what the Lord is asking us to do. So how can we act on the very word of the Lord today is to ask for the Holy Spirit and to ask for the Lord to guide us all, to proclaim out loud, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, you are the Son of God, you are the Most High, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is Lord to everyone we meet, to all nations, to our own family. 
Jesus is truly Lord to our children. He is available. He is at that altar. He is with us in every moment of our day. He does strengthen us. He gives us his own body and blood to partake in. That gives us eternal life in our own bodies. We can proclaim the gospels even to our own family. And when we do, they will comp- they will proclaim the gospels to their family and so on and so forth and this is what the lord has asked us to do in the domestic church is to proclaim his word out loud to our children to our family members and to those around us jesus is lord and he is with us and he will never leave us and this i've received in the holy spirit in jesus name amen bye families may god bless you bye 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 bye